Gene Frieda, PIMCO, and Adam Cole, RBC Europe, Chief Currency Strategist, are still with us. So, Gene, when you look at the emerging markets, it's a dollar call, right? Is it a 60% dollar call? And what do you do? I mean, first of all, I guess you have to define the, the ones that have structural problems and the ones that don't. After that, what does dollar do? After that, I mean, I would say that, you know, if you frame the dollar call, it's very much a function of how the U.S. economy is doing relative to its developed economy peers. Um, and the surprise this year has really been that no one could keep up with the Joneses. You know, so basically everyone else slowed down dramatically. Um, we think that now you're going to a phase where those negative surprises have more or less abated. You can see Europe starting to accelerate again. And you're getting policy responses in China um, that should hopefully put a floor under growth. Um, but the other story really this year in EM has been all of the idiosyncratic stories. I haven't seen this many really in about 20 years. Um, elections, sanctions, you name it. Um, and then you impose the trade frictions you know, on top of it. Mm -hmm. So I think you almost have to distinguish between dollar EM and dollar G10, mm -hmm. um, where EM is really kind of under the cosh and you know, losing a little bit of the window that it had in the face of central bank tightening, Fed tightening, and you know, increasingly ECB and BOJ. Um, and so that's the concern, basically, that they go through these shocks, and by the time they get to 2019, the window's closed. What do, so I'm going to ask you, Jean, uh, about China in a second. But Adam, what do you make of Remnimbi? And does that does the rest of the emerging markets kind of, you know, make or break depending on what China does? I think it's a key factor, and we think the signal we've got from policymakers most recently in China is that um, they're a little bit more sensitive to the exchange rate than perhaps we'd imagined, and that they are um, more likely to, to act to keep the exchange rate relatively stable, that their, their tolerance of further falls uh, are quite limited, particularly if you look at the remedy on a broader basis than just uh, against the dollar. So um, I do think it's a critical factor, but equally I do think going forwards it's likely to be a relative stabilizing factor for emerging markets. Um, more generally, of course, I agree the key question is whether we continue to see emerging markets trade uh, on what I think we've seen so far, which is a series of idiosyncratic stories, Argentina, Turkey, etc., or whether we're yet in an environment where you start to treat emerging markets indiscriminately as a block. And we don't think we're yet at that point where dollar strength is significant enough and U.S. policy is tight enough for emerging markets to right. sell off as a group where there is no domestic story. Adam, very quickly, or bring up the chart. I was going to show this before, but we had the Lagarde headlines out of the United Kingdom. This is dollar peso, the horrific 1997 depreciation of peso, further angst. And here's the miracle of the, of the Philippines in the last decade. Adam, I am thunderstruck by the idiosyncratic giveaway here of Philippine peso. W within Philippine and within eight other countries, what is the ramification if they go through the record weakness of 2004? What is that actually mean for the nation and for the Pacific Rim? I, I think within um, reasonable bands, it's it's not not a major development in terms of the stance of policy. Um, but uh, I come back to the region as a whole, that where you see a very clear trend and, and that's been in place not, not just through Fed tightening, but <clears throat> predates Fed tightening, is that the market is playing deficits versus surpluses externally in emerging markets. If you'd run a portfolio based on surplus versus deficit currencies, you'd have consistently made money for 10 years or more for the whole of the post-crisis period. And I think Asia is a, is a region where that, that comes through most clearly, the outperformance. Right. of the surplus currencies like Korea and the underperformance of deficit currencies. Well, and I think that's a theme we keep coming back to. 